line marked in the middle of the this deck beam mold. Put that up there on this line that designates where the center line is. Hold this down here. Now I'm on frame 14, and so I want to find out what the bevel is of the frame to the deck mold. So I got my little bevel tool here. Put this on the uh, on the frame, and then bring it up here and adjust it to where it's got an angle there flush with the with this deck beam mold, just like that. Now I take and transfer that, and I'm just writing these down on a little board here. Um, well, let's see, frames like that, deck molds like that. You just draw a line on this board that corresponds with what that same angle is. And mark that as number 14. Now the book says do about every third one, but I'm doing every single one. Now I've already done 15, 16, and 17. So now I'm going to come back to 18 or 17. This, this uh, deck mold I got from John Hutchison, who's the same guy that I got the, the molds from, and this is made so that it's a little wider than the beamiest part of the boat, and then the, the angle on this thing here is supposed to represent what the deck crown will look like up forward, but it's usable all the way aft uh, for determining the bevel on the shear clamp which has to be made before it can be installed. And my understanding is the run on this is about one and a half inches to five feet. So we should be on a five foot run about an inch and a half lower than here. Okay, so I was gonna go for number 18. This is 17. And I've been doing this in front of each, each station and I don't know if that's right but I'm going to be consistent about it and it should be close enough. I can't imagine it's wildly different either in front or in back. Okay so now we're back to 18. Put that in there on the frame. Now see that's wildly different now. I gotta bend that bevel gauge up like that and frame goes like this. So this represents the frame, the black part does, and then this represents the angle of the, of the bevel, and in this case that's number 18. I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I've got, I marked that this is the frame side and this is the deck mold side. So you can see that I'm making progress with each, each one of these in a different angle. Um, similarly, I'd done one through, well, I've got one through 15 on this side, same deal. This is the frame, this is the deck mold. So there's frame one all the way up through 15. And then I'm gonna use this to, to put a bit of a bevel in the back side, so the side that's outboard or facing the frames, the side here is going to have this bevel cut into it before we steam it to fit it in here. And the, the idea is that with it beveled on the inside, it'll also be beveled on the, well, beveled on the outside, it'll be beveled on the inside, and that's important for making sure that your angles are right for the combing. Okay, where we last left off, we were getting all the, the angles down on a bevel board so that we would know uh, how much we needed to trim off of the, the shear clamp. Now, I have my shear clamps put together, this one here, and now this is all white oak. The plan calls for Douglas fir. You can see that running aft there. 
and then I have a, another one for starboard over here. I could not get 16, 17, 18 foot runs of oak, so I scarfed these. And you can see, uh, you can see my scarf there, and maybe you can see the scarf on the other one on the other side. I went with about a 10 inch scarf on these. I hope it's enough. But I didn't want to get them too long because these have got a bend. Now, the way I've got it figured, these are laid in here pretty much the way they're going to go. You can see there's a little bit forward up there that, that's going to come back. I think when we get to around the, the shear line here where these go in, that we will be in a relatively flat part back here uh, at about frames 14, 15, maybe 16. And you can see that, that those are a relatively a relatively flat area that shouldn't require much bend at all uh, on the clamp and, and hopefully not put any stress on the on that scarf. I woke up in the middle of the night freaking out about it and thinking, oh my God, I'm going to steam this thing. I'm going to go to bend it in there and then it's going to snap right in the middle. As I'm thinking about it on the way home from work today, I thought, you know, if that would happen, I'd just butt block that thing put a little piece of oak down there up along the inside of the frames and uh, and, and, and butt block those together. I, just not going to find 17 foot pieces of oak that are going to work. Uh, I am very happy with this wood. Uh, it's very straight grained and there's like no knots in it at all. So I was having a most difficult time finding any decent Douglas fir and uh, that, that was just proven to be a problem. Okay, now, the challenge here is how do we transcribe these angles from my little angle board that I had, and I've still got it right here. How do, we, how do we transfer these angles onto the various stations? Well, the first thing I had to do is figure out where are the stations. So I took, I took a tape measure, and I just started measuring, and I know that there's a curve here, and it could affect it a little bit, but like between stations three and four, we are about eight and a half inches. So I started marking them on here. There's, I don't know if you can see that or not, there's three and four, and it, I've got it marked off at eight and a half inches, right down there. Right there. This is the end of part one of the shear clamps. In the next video, we will show how to mark the line that we will then plane to to get the appropriate bevel so we can fit the shear clamps.